Do we as bullion stackers and buyers of coins ever think about the ethical and human welfare impact of the silver and gold that we have and buy? I certainly haven't given it much consideration before being prompted to do so by one of my subscribers. So today I want to talk about some of the impact that silver and gold has on the world and whether or not it's something that we can affect as humble stackers. Everybody, Backyard Bullion here, and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for another Precious Metal Ramble. And the rambleizing topic for this week is the ethics of buying gold and silver. It's a really interesting topic that was actually posed to me by a subscriber, so a big thank you and shout out to them for suggesting this topic, which I hadn't really thought about in any great detail as it relates to my own situation as a buyer, as a manufacturer of silver as well. And I do think it is an important one that's not often talked about enough. Now this comes in a multifaceted kind of area. There are two main ones really that I wanna focus on. There's the environmental considerations about gold and silver, which let's be quite frank, is quite a carbon intense uh, industry. The whole process from end to end is very carbon intensive. And also the ethics of human uh, nature as well and the handling and welfare of miners and countries around the world which have a lot of gold and silver in their ground and they don't necessarily treat their workers very well. Now I'm not calling out any particular countries or companies or mining corporations but it is well known that throughout history to grab anything precious out the ground often you do it you know just got to look at the continent of Africa countries and nations around the world just exploited and just took advantage of what was there including the people and that's a really big thing in this modern world that we live in today so I do want to crack on with those two elements to this topic but I do want to put my usual disclaimer in to say that I'm not an expert I'm not a financial advisor I'm not an ethics advisor I'm just a guy talking about shiny things here on YouTube and I thought this was an interesting topic to talk about and I'd love to know your opinions as we go as well so please feel free to comment down below and if you are enjoying the video as we go hit that thumbs up button it really does help everything we do here on YouTube now first up let's talk about the ethics in terms of the human impact because I think that's that's like a really big one and I know a lot of the environmental stuff is really important too but I think the ethical impact for the human condition I think is something that uh, really must be looked at as well and you do find that there are th plenty of cases throughout history where gold and silver and precious stones and diamonds and crystal whatever they might be coming out the ground has caused mass exploitation of workforces around the world and a lot of the gold and silver that is coming out the ground today is trying to meet massive, massive demand, which is growing year on year. Um, it's not necessarily every single year that the, the sort of demand for silver goes up, but it has progressively gone so over the last couple of decades. When you look at the demand from industry on silver alone and then potentially into the future as well with the solar uh, uses for silver as well and countless other industrial purposes it is an incredible metal for that um, it is something though that has you know this past behind it where exploitation can happen because ultimately the countries where a lot of this stuff is are not necessarily in that kind of you know perfect eu welfare you know ethic ethical states where they look after workforce often it's not very well regulated as well depending on the country and the continent that it's on as well so there are countless examples of uh, basically just you know really bad uh, situations for people and you you know uh, it's something that I've not really done a, a huge in-depth dive research into of course um, but you know you just got to hear and see some of the you know historic looks at mining strikes in South Africa, for example, one of the biggest producers of gold, silver and platinum in the world. Um, you know, it, it is interesting. And these, these countries, certainly in, in terms of South Africa, um, which is one of the more advanced and forward thinking countries in Africa when it comes to human rights and welfare, which is very different to how it used to be, of course, 10, 15, 20, even 30 years ago. So, you know, it is interesting to see how things are developing and, uh, and how they will continue to develop. But how does that all relate to us as consumers? Do we really have any power or impact on this stuff? Well, ultimately, the reason why all of these uh, you know, situations that could potentially occur have or do occur 
is because there is this huge demand for gold and silver. Now, as individual consumers, can we really have a big impact on that global demand? You know, you've only got to look at the silver squeeze and how much that has categorically failed and will continue to categorically fail to see that, you know, collectively us stackers have really very little impact on the gold and silver markets. Certainly the gold market and uh, in terms of the silver, you know, investment bullion has certainly seen a resurgence and an increase in this last couple of years, but it's certainly nowhere near scratching the iceberg that is the industrial demand uh, from even, you know, around the, just around the world generally. It is huge. So from our point of view, can we really do that? You know, is there any sense in like one of the comments that this uh, su subscriber suggested to me was that should we as consumers be boycotting brand new releases of silver because it's causing these ethical dilemmas and, you know, human rights abuses? Um, I kind of, I don't think we'll have any impact. I mean, yes, arguably we are small, uh, impactful in this, you know, global demand and we are having that impact slightly. But uh, I do think that responsibility has to perhaps fall back onto the mints and the refineries that are supplying and sourcing the silver for them to push back to the raw material producers that are having this stuff coming out of the ground to make sure that, that whole supply chain is looked after correctly in terms of human rights. I would be happy if my silver cost a little bit more uh, if it was that right ethical train. I think I would that was something I would be more than happy to pay with that peace of mind. And I understand that that sometimes has to happen. You know, ultimately, we as stackers, we want something as cheap as possible. Um, but at the end of the day, do I want... It's like blood diamonds. Do you want something as cheap as possible, but it's got that blood attached to it in the history? No, you don't. So, you know, it's one of those kind of catch-22s that some people will just be like, well, no, it has to be as cheap as possible because unfortunately the world revolves on money and profit and uh, it is one of those things. So I do think from that side of things, it's a really interesting kind of thought, thought uh, process to go through, but ultimately it has to fall back onto the, uh, the mints, the refineries and the people and companies that are actually physically producing this stuff to make sure it's right. I don't know how much impact we as individual consumers will have, just like the silver squeeze. We can't manipulate a giant market, global market of industry just from our kitchen tables and uh, modest little tiny stacks. So, And even if you have thousands of ounces, that's modest and tiny compared with the big global market. So now I want to move on to the environmental factors. Now this one is obviously something a little bit more, uh, it's, it's a bit of a different animal really than the human welfare side of things. But we've got to be quite honest and frank that gold and silver are not a carbon neutral uh, environment. We are in a world, we are on a planet that has finite resources and one day this stuff will become more expensive to take out the ground more rare to find and even potentially one day even just not be there anymore. We might mine all the gold. I mean, there is a lot of gold and silver out there, don't get me wrong. It's still something that you can find a lot of and you've only got to look at the figures each year to see quite how much comes out the ground. But I do think as uh, an industry, silver is, it tends to be quite good in terms of reclamation of silver. Of course, it being a precious metal, it's something that can uh, and is recycled and used and reused. And you do have these figures on the, um, you know, global, uh, na global, uh, what's, what's the word? I'm losing my complete train of thought and words here. Global numbers each year for the amount of silver and gold demand and supply. That's what I was looking for. Um, you see these numbers for reclaimed silver uh, in industry and beyond. And I know from my own perspective, uh, you know, using using old dirty silver coins, milky coins, uh, you know, is just fine for me. Uh, I don't personally do any of the refining side of things in terms of getting, uh, you know, sterling silver, refining it up to 999. But there are countless uh, companies out there that can do that for you. It's quite a dangerous thing to do with all the chemicals. But, um, you know, using kind of reclaimed silver and that side of things is definitely something more people are doing. The scrap silver that's out there in circulation gets snapped up, sent up. You know, when a dealer buys a bunch of scrap silver at 75% spot price, they just send it for a refinery. It gets put back into the supply chain and is used then from there out. Uh, so again, it's, uh, it's an interesting one, isn't it? And one of the big points, I think, for the environmental factors for gold and silver is that ultimately gold and silver are often byproducts of other materials coming out the ground. So you'll find a lot of the time that silver and gold really are you know, subsidiary to copper and the amount of money that a mining company will make will actually be from you know, copper coming out the ground. And the gold and silver is a byproduct that is refined and it's like the icing on top of the cake really, but it doesn't form the vast majority of that income that comes from a particular mine 
Or, uh, it's really, uh, really fascinating like that. I mean, there are some soul, silver, and gold mines out there that are still operating, and uh, and their focus is the silver. But you'll find often that a lot of the value that comes out of that ground is in other metals and other materials that is much easily and more in demand for industry. You know, copper being the big one there, uh, but even things like zinc and tin and everything. It, it's just you know, gold and silver are second fiddle to a lot of those metals. So. If we as consumers again try to you know affect the market by saying do we just boycott brand new stuff do we not go for this stuff anymore because we're having this you know environmental impact on the planet I disagree because ultimately a lot of the production that comes out the ground is coming out the ground anyway and I would not be surprised as well if a lot of these mining companies um, you know the gold and silver that comes out will uh, just basically continue to do so it, it's basically free money for them they've got this you know this demand for the copper and that's what they're doing and this stuff that comes out the ground that's all yellow and shiny is going to be just refined and used as that bumper um you know that helps them along the way they don't they won't hold it they won't you know put it in the uh, in the vault and wait for the gold price to go up they'll just get it gone and help that uh, whole turnover of that whole site and the exploration and everything of the rest of the mine um it is i think a really interesting point though and uh, i do think that we as a you know, global economy and global community are paying more attention to the sort of environmental impacts on uh, on our industries and gold and silver and the production of coins and bullion is most certainly one of those. You know, it's uh, when you look at refining and the actual you know energy that's involved and the carbon footprint that's involved in brand new coins uh, there is an argument to be had while buying stuff from for example in the perth mint to the uk you know that's going to be exceptionally high in carbon footprint perhaps the silver, perhaps the raw material comes from central america mexico or south america it travels to uh, australia is refined in restra- in australia or perhaps it's even refined elsewhere it could be refined around anywhere in the world and then the raw material blanks are sent to the Perth Mint, made into coins. Then they're shipped to perhaps dealers in Europe. And then those dealers in Europe are supplying dealers in the UK. And you can see all of a sudden that these global uh, you know, footprints of, uh, of carbon footprint is happening. Uh, and I don't quite know if, if, you know if you're shipping tens of thousands of ounces and tons of gold and silver around the world as a, a Perth Mint or the Royal Mint. You're probably not putting these on container ships and having them sit in the middle of the ocean for six weeks to get round the uh, you know round the world, they're probably flying. So, you know, quite a high carbon footprint, and that all contributes to the uh, you know environmental impact. Now, again, it's a I think a responsibility of the of the mints of the refineries to try and work out ways to have a lower carbon footprint, to have more um, efficient and economic production lines so that the amount of silt, for example, reclaiming the amount of waste material that they've got and using that to create the coins again, uh, you know, I think is really important. And it's something that I, again, would pay more for if I knew that a particular mint or refinery was taking these things serious. Would I double the price of silver for that? Probably not, but would I pay a couple of pounds extra an ounce if I knew that my silver was sourced responsibly from an ethical mining corporation refinery and then put into a supply chain where they've mitigated some of the carbon that they're producing, even if it's not in the actual production, if they're if just say the Perth Mint or any mint around the world has a carbon neutrality um, goal, if they're perhaps planting trees or taking other, imp- you know, their impact on that global climate change, if they're taking that impact seriously and doing other things to help counterbalance it, then that, in my eyes, is a plus in their book. Not everybody will care about that. Not everybody will think about that. I personally think it's exceptionally interesting and it's the single most important thing for our planet for the future. But I get as well that there are people out there in this world who don't think that that's a priority. There are other things going on in the world which are much more important for them, and that's absolutely fine. But I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on it as well. I really have enjoyed doing a little bit of a thought experiment on this topic, and a big thank you to the subscriber that sent that suggestion in. Very, very useful. And if you've got a suggestion for a topic or something you'd like to hear me ramble on about here on this channel, then please make sure you let me know either down in the comment section or dropping me an email, which is byb at backyardbullion.com. Otherwise, just a quick YouTube reminder to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video and to subscribe if you want to see videos from us in the future. With notifications, you can hit that alarm bell as well to get those. Otherwise, that is it from me. A big thank you to you all for watching. We'll see you on the next one. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.